Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing? All right. Sunday Upbeat Live audiences are the most enthusiastic, so I, I am really uh, excited to be here uh, to help guide you through this amazing concert you're going to hear this afternoon with the Vaughn Williams Second Symphony and the Brahms Second Piano Concerto. My name is Russell Steinberg, and uh, I do a lot of these Upbeat Lives. I'm a composer, and I also conduct the Los Angeles Youth Orchestra and teach at various places like UCLA. And uh, my interest here is that I'm like you. I sit, in the, I sit in the audience listening to this music, and I just want to be closer to it. And I always felt program notes sometimes get you, take you farther away from the experience. So what we try and do here is get you into the music so that you're just all primed and you're following it as closely as the musicians on stage, which is, not, is actually not impossible to do. It's intended to be followed that way. You know, the musicians are telling me how much they're enjoying the Vaughn Williams Symphony. And, the, and all of them have said this is not a work that they know very well. This is a work that you say, you know, in Britain is, is extremely well known. I wonder if you could, let me see, for a show of hands, how many of you are hearing this, the Second Symphony of Vaughn Williams for the first time tonight? Today? Excellent. What a treat you have in store. <laughs> the colonies, you know, what are we going to do? So, so, you know, and had, had he listened to Admiral Roy Weber, right? <laughs> so, so that's, that, that's, the, that's one re way you're going to, this piece is going to be very familiar to you. Brahms. We all know the Brahms. How many of you have heard the Brahms concerto more than 50 times? <laughs> look at the hands, look at the hands. <laughs> Like I said, would you like to come up and talk about the Bronx with Marmy? This piece is so extraordinary. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you about it on a different level than just kind of describing how the piece goes, because I think most of you know how it goes. Um, and what I'd like to talk about is how interesting it is and the way it unfolds in a very different way than Beethoven unfolds and other concertos unfold. And to do that, we need to sing a little bit. And this, Sunday audiences are the best for this, <laughs> I discovered. So what, we're going to, the opening, of course, the horn. So let's do that together. Hey. Yeah. La, 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 la. Oh, God, that was so beautiful. You know, the, 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 you know, the Friday audience, the E-flat was totally out of tune. You guys just <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> What Brahms does that I think is so phenomenal, and you won't read in program notes, is that he, instead of doing what Beethoven does, Beethoven takes a tune, or a motive actually, right? Da 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 dum, or da dum ba ba da da dum dum. And he takes it and he chops it into little pieces, and he slices it and he dices it, and then he puts it together into something bigger. And so there's this constant regeneration, but things are, things are, are, ta are the lengths are changed, and that's what we call development. And, and uh, if you think of the Beethoven first, uh, Fifth Symphony, it's very famous uh, because it starts with that da 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 bum bum and then you get five notes, then you get four notes in the development, then three notes, then two notes, and then the whole piece falls apart. It's just one note going back and forth. And that's kind of the quintessential Beethovenian idea of development. Brahms doesn't work that way. He has a very different idea, and I don't think a lot of people have talked about it, but uh, they've talked about one quality, which is that he's always making variations. So we call that developing variation. But I think it goes deeper than that. You can hear it in this piece where he's, he's not just, varying isn't the right word, it's really like echoing. Everything is a reverberation. I'm gonna show you what I mean. If we sing the first three notes, and yeah. hold that. Now we're gonna sing the next three notes. La, la, la. It's exactly the same thing backwards, right? And then finally, La, la. Well, that's the same thing, same interval, just missing the middle note. It doesn't go. So you heard the same thing three times. The very next thing you hear is the piano comes in, and one, which has to be one of the most amazing entrances in a, any concerto. He, the pianist, you'll hear Andre Watts. 
hit this low B flat, one, just about the lowest note on the piano. And if, if we had feedback, like electronic feedback, that, it would blend very nicely. We had that Friday, but we're clean tonight. And then as soon as you hear that, the pianist does this. Making this beautiful echo of an echo of an echo. Uh, for, for instance, think of the second movement. That's how it begins. Uh, the piano starts. And then the orchestra comes in. That's the beginning of that, right? Well, <laughs> it's very much da, 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 da. <laughs> it's just kind of a riff on that. And even if that wasn't clear, as soon as you hear this, the next thing you hear is bum, bum, bum. Well, what is that? It's just the reverse of do, re, mi. So the second movement is already riffing completely on everything we heard in the first movement. Again, what Brahms is doing is taking something we know and changing it almost in its entirety in a way that sounds like a fresh new piece of music. When the tune comes back, it comes in the wrong key. And that is a great moment. It comes in F sharp major. It's supposed to be in B flat. We know it's supposed to be in B flat. It's in the wrong key. And because of that, it feels incredibly distant. distant. And there is an adjustment that they have to make. And that moment is one of my favorite places in the concerto. I want to play that for you. And I want you to hear it. That's the reason why he has to repeat it, uh, is because it's a false return of the tune. Here it is in F sharp major. He's playing higher on the cello. It's very expressive, but it's, there's a more distant, fuzzy quality. It's like what my, my teacher would call the divine flaw. <laughs> he made the mistake in the wrong key. So he starts to go on. And then this correction right here. Oh, those few measures are worth the entire piece. And, and that, with that, it allows him to change keys. He uses a minor chord to get back to the home key. Here's the minor chord. And this gets us back home. And now we get the tune in the right key. Ah. It is the great moment. Those are the things you listen for in this piece that go through, through the, and this is why you can listen to this piece hundreds of times and get so excited by it. By it. And uh, I remember Brahms was very upset at the premiere because some lady came up to him and said, oh, Mr. Herr Brahms, how is it that you write such pretty melodies all the time in your <laughs> slow movements? And he just wanted to throttle her <laughs> because yeah, I'm sure he, she had no idea the work that goes into this, you know, to, to make all these things come together. But as we listen to it more, we make these connections. So I've tried to give you this, this, this metaphor of echoing because I think it will change the way you hear the piece. If you find, uh, if you want to make comments or whatever, feel free to respond on my website. I get some amazing comments from all of you. And I really hope you, you enjoy this concert. Two very different pieces, but some of the most satisfying music you'll hear. Thank you so much for singing with me. <laughs> enjoy the concert. <laughs>